Scientists examined signs of trauma in thousands of dire wolf and saber-tooth tiger bones, and the research changes our understanding of how these Ice Age beasts killed their prey. Here is what they found. As the Pleistocene Epoch came to a close 11,000 years ago, the area known to us as downtown Los Angeles was littered with tar pits. When animals would find themselves stuck in the pits and unable to escape, predators like dire wolves and saber-toothed cats saw easy meal opportunities. However, they too would underestimate the pool of the tar pits, often slipping in and dying alongside their own prey targets, and thousands of years later, researchers at UCLA, in collaboration with the La Brea Tar Pits, analyzed the injuries drawn from skeletal remains to better understand what their hunting strategies likely were. Researchers have long hypothesized that dire wolves chased down their prey with attacks from behind. Expectations were that they suffered injuries to the skull and teeth. Wrong. In fact, a more common trend of neck injuries indicates that dire wolves likely bit down onto the bodies of huge prey in a pack in a pack effort to take them down. Saber-toothed cats, similar to the tigers of today, were ambush predators, but had much higher mortality rates due to hunting on their own for the same prey. Surprisingly, their skeletal specimens revealed a trend of shoulder and back injuries, giving us reason to believe their preferred method was to tackle prey to the ground before using their long teeth to fatally slash their targets. The analysis of roughly 35,000 bones was published in the journal Nature Ecology and Evolution. At this point, we can do a pretty good job of imagining what it would have been like to live with these predators. Fossilized footprints in New Mexico tell the harrowing story of a woman and a two-year-old child's dangerous journey some 13,000 years ago. A study in Quaternary Science Reviews concluded that the woman was walking very fast because dangerous animals were in the area, including saber-toothed cats and dire wolves. Mammoths and a giant sloth crossed her tracks between her first and second trips, with the sloth rearing on its hind legs to catch the scent. It was aware of the danger. And perhaps not just from the saber-toothed cat and dire wolf, as a study from last year in Science Advances concluded that prehistoric women also hunted. Life for humans in America may have been like this for more than 20,000 years, as new research shows prehistoric humans may have settled in central Mexico 33,000 years ago, possibly after journeying down the West Pacific coast. The researchers unearthed what appeared to be man-made stone tools in the Chiquihuite cave of central Mexico, according to the study in Nature. By 11,000 years ago, most large mammals in North America had gone extinct, so humans evolved bigger brains, according to a paper published this year in the journal Yearbook of Physical Anthropology, to help keep track of larger numbers of smaller but swifter prey, better control of fire, and craft more sophisticated tools. Of course, not all scientists are content to just look at the footprints and bones of Ice Age mammals, some want to bring them back to life. A Harvard Medical School geneticist project has secured $15 million to revive the woolly mammoth to help recreate a grazing ecosystem in the Arctic, according to the BBC. Like walking bulldozers, the mammoths could compact snow and level forests and shrublands, which would mean sunlight reflecting snow remains in those areas longer. To recreate the woolly mammoth, The Guardian reports scientists will add genes from specimens to skin cells of Asian elephants. An egg is then created in the lab, and its nucleus is switched out for that of the skin cell that is mixed with the mammoth's DNA. In a similar fashion, scientists from Russia and South Korea have been working to clone an extinct horse using DNA from a foal that died 42,000 years ago. The Linskaya foal's body was found in the permafrost of a Siberian crater, the Siberian Times reported in 2019. The team wants to extract cells, cultivate them in a growth medium, and place them in a carbon dioxide incubator. The resulting embryo would be implanted in a South Korean horse. Projects like these face similar questions to other genetic research projects that seek to play God. Earlier this year, a team of U.S. and Chinese scientists implanted human cells into monkey embryos, according to a study in the journal Cell. As with the mammoth proposal, that process began with the reprogramming of mature skin or blood cells into a stem cell-like state. 25 reprogrammed human cells were added to macaque monkey embryos to form a chimera or mixed species embryo, according to Science Alert. Although human cells made up only around 4% of the chimera embryos, all of hybrid embryos that survived for the full length of the experiment were destroyed for ethical reasons. The researchers consulted with bioethicists and thus grew the embryos in a lab rather than a surrogate. Researchers recently analyzed the remains of a Neanderthal child and found that the two-year-old was probably buried by its tribe, casting new light on the way these ancient cousins of humans treated their deceased. According to the research paper published in the journal Scientific Reports, the child skeleton was first unearthed in 1973 from a rock shelter at the La Ferrasi dig site in southwest France. 
Much of the evidence for Neanderthal burial practices comes from digs undertaken in the early 20th century. Before today's rigorous archaeological standards, this led to initial skepticism as to the veracity of the purported burial sites. The new researchers re-examined the remains and revisited the original excavation site. They concluded that 41,000 years ago, the child had been laid carefully in a grave that was then covered with fresh soil. This would make it the first evidence for a Neanderthal burial in Europe, adding further support to the notion that funerary practices are not unique to our species. The team radiocarbon dated one of the skeleton's smaller bones, placing it at around 41,000 years old. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.